The story of photography is the story of light. And every time I head out to shoot, my story begins with the same question. How can I better write with light and with shadow? Some of my earliest memories of street photography were filled with excitement, arrogance, impatience, lack of understanding of my settings, and this intoxicating need to get out and shoot every single day. I didn't worry about weather, I didn't worry about light, shadow, my surroundings. I just wanted to shoot, shoot, shoot. I think my only purpose was therapy. I could run from my day-to-day -day life by taking pictures on the street, but also I could run towards who I wanted to be. I felt there was something there, and I knew I felt more myself when I was out walking on the streets. But in retrospect, when I look back at what was the core reason for my short-sighted approach to street photography, it was having my iPhone 4 as my first camera. Because everything was auto, I shot in auto. Whatever the camera said was a good exposure, I assumed that's what it was. I felt like I didn't need to buy a DSLR or a digital camera. I had my phone and the phone was perfect. So when I was shooting, I wasn't thinking about things like light and shadow, shape, patterns and how they interact and play with each other. I didn't think about those things. I just thought, hey, I got an image. And if it happened to have one of those elements in it, I felt like that was a bonus. Yet I didn't really know or understand how those things were happening. Now, I would say it wasn't for another two years that I finally clicked in, which is kind of embarrassing how long that took for me to understand how light and shadow play with each other and the importance of that. Granted, not all light is created equal. There were a lot of overcast days, soft light, hard light, bad light, so to speak. So it did take some time to understand there was a spectrum of light. Ideally, you would want good light, but if you didn't have that, what could you do to create these images with light and shadow at the forefront of your compositions? Now, by no means do I have all the answers, but I did find a common thread in my images when I focused in on light, shadow, and shape. So let me just share a few things that I know, and hopefully they work for you too as well. All right, so one of the first things I wanna focus in on, the importance of saving my highlights as opposed to saving my shadows. So what do I mean by that? Well, when you look at your image, you have to say to yourself, what's more important? having highlights that are perfectly exposed or having shadows that are perfectly exposed. Okay, here's some good news. Most digital cameras have some sort of exposure compensation dial. I'm on the GR2 and as you can see, as I'm overexposing the image by pushing the dial, I can see that my histogram here in the right corner is blown out. So now as we begin to underexpose our image, we lose information in our shadows, but that's okay because we are preserving our highlights in that process. So look for a balance, maybe negative three, negative seven, depending on your scene. And then what you need to save your highlights, take a look in your camera, see if they've got this feature. I don't want anything in the sky or my brightest point to be overexposed. It could be someone's face, their hands to be overexposed, a window that has light reflecting to be overexposed, and the shadows in the corners of the actual composition will be too dark to really understand. But I'd rather have more information in my highlights than I would in the shadows. It's almost like the shadows are helping the image get focused and bring the eye back to the center of the composition. Okay, so next let's talk about foreground and movement. These elements can complement an image even if you have just okay light. And I'll give you some examples in a second. But essentially, foreground and movement help create texture, depth, and energy in your image. And these are important parts, especially if you don't have great light. You're gonna need some other elements brought into the composition to give it life, to make it pop off the page, so to speak. And finally, let's talk about geometry and embracing it into our compositions and our scenes. Okay, so we're talking about shape, patterns, forms, lines. These elements are gonna help guide the viewer's eye 
and hopefully welcome them into our world, our perspective of the world. And speaking of perspective, that plays a huge part in how our scene is going to roll out. So whether we're way up high looking down on a scene or we're shooting from really low or at waist level, it doesn't really matter. Perspective is going to tell a different story each time. And I think it's important to have your take on how you see the world. And I think one way to do that is to have it baked in your mind that you want to share images that look like this and feel like this. So for me, that would be gritty, soulful and honest. And so I'm always looking for those certain elements to help tell the story of how I see the world. OK, so I grabbed a few images and put them together in three different groups, highlights, foreground and geometry. Just giving you examples, really quick examples, how they interact with each other and how they can improve your composition and ultimately your storytelling. So let's take a quick peek. OK, so let's start with highlights here. We're at highlight number one. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. So I was exposing for my highlights here. These are my highlights. I really want those to be exposed properly because if not, this gentleman's hat's going to be overexposed. Wood panels will be overexposed. It's almost like the image has a frame within the frame and that's what the shadow's job is. And you go in your, ca your camera and expose for this as opposed to your shadows because this detail is all lost and that's okay because the eye is getting focused back to the center of the image as we were saying earlier. So that's why I love saving my highlights as opposed to saving my shadows. All right, so in this image, it's about the foreground. Now, we talked about saving our highlights, so we did a pretty good job of that. But now let's add an element to our photo to help tell a story. Imagine if this chain link fence wasn't here. It's decent, right? You have a building, some graffiti, and then you have the CN Tower in the front or uh, in the background. But it's kind of flat. It doesn't have uh, texture or layer. And that's where the foreground comes in. As you can see, I'm tilting up. So again, there's a few elements going on, but because we used the foreground elements, it helps tell a better or more interesting story just based on putting an element in the foreground. So lines and patterns, that's what you see here. Okay, so the first thing again is the highlights. We expose for the highlights. That's why you have these moody shadows. But one of the cool things is there's a gentleman right here and it's like they're coming out of like a tunnel. That's what our mind sees or like a cave, even though this is just because we expose for the highlights. We saved our highlights here. We saved them throughout and here down here we saved them. This is a pretty straightforward image showing you how shapes can tell better stories. It just looks like there's a lot going on but it's all organized. And there you have it. Foreground, geometry, highlights. These are all things that are gonna to come together to tell a better story. All right, so that's my take on light and shadow and shape. You know, light, shadow and shape have always been here. It's just a matter of when you tap into understanding how you can put it into your photography, how you can make it work for you. And that obviously comes with practice and taking your time. Don't be so harsh on yourself. Let me know in the comments if there's something that I missed because I'm always open to learning and understanding your perspective of street photography. Okay, so until the next video, stay creative and believe in yourself. Peace.